I made a video recently about the dichromatism of pumpkin seed oil and Andy Capo 123 left a comment saying that something really cool happens when you shine ultraviolet light onto pumpkin seed oil. So let's give that a try. So when you shine ultraviolet light on pumpkin seed oil, it glows red. And that's because of a molecule called protochlorophyllide, which fluoresces. What that means is it's a molecule that can absorb a certain wavelength of light, like ultraviolet, and that makes it jump up to a higher energy state. But instead of then instantly dropping back down to the original energy level and releasing a photon of the same energy and the same color, it actually loses some energy through heat so that when it finally jumps back down to the original energy state, it's a shorter jump. So the energy of the photon emitted is less and the color of a photon depends on its energy. So we go from a high energy photon uh, of ultraviolet light, which we can't see, to a lower energy photon of red light that we can see. This is my ultraviolet torch. Interestingly, I don't see much light coming from this thing. I can see a little bit of blue light because it's giving off blue light, but if I shine it at the camera, you can see it very brightly. That's because this camera is sensitive to ultraviolet light, and most cameras are. And that's not a good thing because a camera is supposed to faithfully reproduce what a person would see in that situation. But it turns out it's actually quite expensive to make a camera that isn't sensitive to ultraviolet and infrared. So there's a compromise. You filter out as much ultraviolet and infrared as you can, but there's still a little bit that gets through. It's just a short video this week because I am writing a book and it's taking up all of my time. The deadline is fast approaching, so I'm trying to do just the book writing at the moment, but I found some time to make this video. Uh, I'll tell you all about the book when it's ready, but in the meantime, here is a fact that I learned whilst writing the book, and I can't believe I didn't know this already, uh, and maybe you don't know either, but... Okay, so you might know that the Earth has more than one North Pole, so... Uh, there's what's called the instantaneous North Pole, which is the axis of rotation, so it's the point around which the Earth rotates. Uh, but there's also the magnetic North Pole, so you probably know this as well, the Earth is a giant magnet, so it has poles in the same way that a magnet does. But the North Pole is a South Pole. So, <laughs> what? Uh, the, 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 the North Pole is the, the, it's the South Pole of a magnet. And the reason this happened is because if you hold a compass in your hand, then you're holding a, a magnet. The needle of the compass is a magnet with a North Pole and a South Pole. And, you know, it swings around and points in a particular direction. So I guess someone said, OK, look, the North Pole of this magnet is pointing that way. So let's call that way North. The problem is... As you probably know, North Poles are attracted to South Poles. So this needle, the north of this needle on your compass, must be pointing to a South Pole. It's pointing to the South Pole of the Earth, the South Magnetic Pole, which is the North Pole. And brilliantly, to distinguish between these different poles, you say, OK, we've got the instantaneous North Pole and we've got the magnetic North Pole. And so what you have to say is the magnetic North Pole is a south magnetic pole. The magnetic north pole is a south magnetic pole. And it's just uh, one of these brilliant examples where we're kind of lumped with a really annoying situation. We can't change it now, it's too late. It's uh, a quirk of history, a bit like the fact that we use pi instead of tau. Tau would be better, but we're stuck with pi. And we're stuck with the south pole of the earth being called the North Pole. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit subscribe and I'll see you next time.